Okay, welcome back. So 2021, what a year, huh? It just seems like every time I turn around, there's a new release in the offing, and today is no different with Bull Armory coming out yesterday and announcing that they're gonna offer a Glock 19 size EDC option called the Axe C Series. So the C I assume stands for compact, and I'm hoping this portends a future expansion into an Axe F for full size, maybe even an Axe SC for subcompact, but we'll have to wait and see how the Axe C line goes first. So Bull Armory is an Israeli company and they're commonly known for their phenomenally engineered and excellently valued race guns, which is uh, the SAS 2 lineup. What's not as commonly known is that Bull has an increasingly impressive lineup in addition to their race guns, including nine different 1911 versions, two different versions of what looks like the CZ-75 short recoil system, the IWI Jericho 941, um, they call it the Cherokee Full Size and Cherokee Compact. And they've even released a PCC race gun called the BL-9. Um, the BL-9 was teased in a firearm blog article December 10th, 2019 with the caveat it was going to be released in late 2020. Now we all know what happened in 2020. Uh, all bets were off the table. Uh, the most recent picture I saw was on their Facebook page with a sponsored Israeli shooter shooting it, um, but I have not seen it in the U.S. I was curious just to see if I could find it anywhere. I did some digging around and I found the BL-9 listed as out of stock in a Slovenian website, but other than that, I really don't know what happened to it. If you do know, please feel free to drop it in the comments below if you have some insight into uh, the BL-9. Uh, the initial photos, I'll probably run some here, did look amazing with a blue finish, a purple finish, and a color match Ducati red finish. That's kind of cool. I know in the guitar world, um, it's common to do some Tesla match colors. I think John Mayer did that with his PRS Silver Sky. So that's, that's kind of neat. I'd like to see more of that in firearms where they color match. Uh, automobile colors that'd be pretty cool but for some backstory I've referred to this in previous videos I think but Glock's patent on the generation 3 Glock version was approved sometime prior to the gen 3 release in 1998 the patent had a lifespan of 17 years thus when the patent expired in 2015 or sometime prior depending on when that patent actually went through a host of companies released their own tweaked versions of uh, primarily the Gen 3 Glock 19, and it continues to this day, obviously we're talking about it in this video. Uh, the deal is, as long as the external visual resemblance is kept to a minimum, engineering internals and specs can be cloned exactly. So there are honestly, and that's my best understanding of it, don't quote me on that, I'm not a lawyer, so that's my best understanding, I'm just passing it on to you. Um, at this point, there's honestly too many to name for companies that are doing these uh, Glock Gen 3 modification builds, but some include the Nomad Defense Nomad 9, the Agency Arms complete builds, including the Sage Dynamic Signature pistols based on the G45 and G19 frame. Love the look of these. Uh, love Sage Dynamics YouTube channel. Check them out and subscribe if you haven't already. The Zevtech OZ9 with several different iterations. Uh, the newest being an OZ9C X Combat. Check that out, I think that just released recently. The Palmetto State Armory Dagger, which of course we all know about. Many versions of the Polymer 80 lowers. The Lone Wolf LTD19 line, I think Honest Outlaw did a review of that recently if my memory serves me correctly. And then finally, one that my buddy Chuk loves and personally carries, a modified G19 by Boogeyman Customs, and I'll link his review of that in a card above. So back to the Bull Armory Axe series. In keeping with the Edge Weapon theme, all three versions of the axes are called the Tomahawk, the Hatchet, and the Cleaver. All three pistols come in the same G19 size frame, slides, barrel lengths, but they offer varying levels of customization, such as you might see in a custom design Glock. Let's start with the similarities. The Tomahawk, Hatchet, and Cleaver all appear to have the same stippled frame with what looks like aggressive stippling around the lower part of the grip, which the shooter's forefingers would connect with. It kind of reminds me of Springfield XD, to be honest with you. Uh, that's the closest I could think of. 
So I appreciate this because while the visually appealing left and right sides of the pistol grip are what catch people's eye, practically speaking the front and the rear of the grip are what, are, what is most important when it comes to a shooter's grip connection with the pistol. Additionally, a slightly downward sloping horizontal ledge for the meat of the underside of your thumb and trunk of your thumb to rest on has been thoughtfully engineered, including horizontal lines running in tandem up to the little ledge of the slide release. Um, the slide release ledge is so that when riding your grip high, the shooter doesn't inadvertently engage the slide release and keep the slide from locking back when the magazine runs dry. The ledge and horizontal lines are extremely impressive and something that I can honestly say I've never seen on an aftermarket Gucci Glock pistol frame before. The principle behind the grip engineering is that once you have a high and tight lock grip on the pistol, obviously ideally as high up on the beaver tail that you can get to the bore axis without the slide biting you as it comes back during firing, the ledge underneath your thumb, coupled with the horizontal lines that your thumb actually contacts, work in tandem to prevent your grip from moving while simultaneously giving you a repeatable index grip point. The same concept has been applied further up the frame above the trigger where your support hand thumb rests. An ambidextrous oval rough texture stippling has been added to secure that thumb to ensure a locked in torquing slightly inward grip. This I can only assume acts in the same manner to prevent any slippage downward of the support hand thumb as the pistol reacts under recoil. Other features of the frame include a double undercut trigger guard for higher purchase on the pistol and a pick rail at the front for lights, lasers, brass weights for you USPSA guys, I joke. Uh, a flared magwell makes stripping a stuck magazine easy and quick. What I can only surmise is that Bull took their time and perhaps even enlisted the help of their world-class sponsored shooters in the design of the features of this frame. All in all, even without any of the other features that the Axe C line offers, the frame alone is a home run. Moving on, while the frames of the pistols are the same, the slides vary. The cleaver is the most budget friendly with cleaver slide serrations and a stainless steel and black PVD finish. I do like the branding on the sides of the pistols with a particular model name on the barrels. It adds a classy touch to the overall appearance of the pistol. It comes with the same three and a half to four pound pull flat face trigger as the other two models. So as far as I can tell, all three models come with the same trigger and includes stainless steel pins and an aluminum guide rod. Steel three dot sights come standard on the cleaver as well as the other two models. The mid-range model is called the Hatchet and offers all the features of the cleaver plus a more intricately milled slide. It should be noted that the additional milling of the slide brings the hatchet weight down from the 1.32 pounds total without the magazine of the cleaver to 1.29 pounds total. Hardly a noticeable difference, I think 0 0.03, but I thought I'd mention it just because uh, milling slides does take away weight. So the more material you leave on the slide, the heavier the pistol is going to be. Finally, the flagship of the Axe C series is called the Tomahawk and probably the one most viewers will be interested in. It comes with everything the hatchet and cleaver have but adds additional milling of the slide including a cut that shows the fluted gold PVD finish barrel. Yeah, it's the bling, it's the Gucci Glock, it's where, it's where these things got their names, right? Uh, we love to show off our copper or gold little barrels showing through the slide cuts. So it comes, also comes optic ready with a Trijicon RMR footprint. The Tomahawk is the only model out of the three models that does come with a RMR optic cut ready. Uh, now for the bad news. So Bull Armory also announced yesterday that for now the Axe C line will only be available in Israel. However, Bull left the door ajar with a further clarification. The pricing and availability in other regions will be determined. So we can only hope that this means that it will be coming stateside. Bull, please. Um, let's hope it comes stateside soon. So let me know what you think in the comments below, especially any further information regarding the grip features that I may have overlooked or forgotten. At first blush, guys, I can't overstate how impressed I am by the work that went into the grip frame features. Um, I would absolutely love to shoot this thing and get a first-hand feel of how it is while firing. Um, but alas, that might be a long ways off. As always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me on the journey. LW Road, out.